is Shakespeare time. We are working on Macbeth and today we get to hear from Macbeth in act two, scene one. Super exciting, yay! So things that are happening. He and his wife are plotting to kill the king because three witches told him that he would eventually be king and they've determined that the fastest way for that to happen is for him to kill the current king because then he will get to be king because he's really great in battle and that's just what will happen. People will let him be king, apparently. Um, screw the rights of succession. Even though the king of Scotland, Duncan, has named Malcolm to be his heir, so then there's also gonna have to be something happening with Malcolm in order to make Macbeth the king, but whatever. Macbeth has been wavering on it a lot and his wife has been very much stick to your guns, we're gonna do this, we're gonna go kill him. He's here in our castle now, he's only here for one night, so we have to do it tonight. So, you know, put on your big boy pants and we're gonna, we're first gonna host him, like everything's fine and lovely and we'll give him food and wine and drink and things will be great. And then when he goes to bed, we'll kill him. So that's sort of where we left at the end of act one. At the beginning of act two, in this beginning of Act 2, Scene 1, we actually start out with Banquo and Fleance. Now remember, Banquo has also been told that his children will be kings, even though he will not be a king. He was there when the witches were talking to Macbeth in the first place. And Fleance is his son. And they're they're talking, they're like, you know, um, everybody's basically going to bed because it's, it's really late and most people are drunk by now. And then Macbeth comes in and they're like, why are you still awake? Like, I thought everybody had gone to sleep at this point. And um, Macbeth's like, oh yeah, what, nothing, no, my, my wife's gonna, you know, ring a bell when my drink is ready, so yeah, the, I'll, I'll just sort of wait for her, to, for that to happen, and then I'll, then I'll go to bed. And Banquo was like, you know, I'm sort of thinking about those witches again, and Macbeth's like, wait, what, no, no, I wasn't thinking about them at all, they haven't even crossed my mind. And Banquo's like, well, okay. Never mind then, and Macbeth's like, but you know, since you since you brought it up, since you brought it up, maybe at some point we should find some time to chat about that whole witch thing. And Banquo's like, yeah, okay, yeah, but um, if there's anything that's gonna be happening to Duncan, like I don't want to be involved in that. I just want to make that part clear. And they're like, okay, yeah, cool, all right. Uh, off to bed you go. And Banquo and Fleance leave, and Macbeth is left there with a servant to whom he says, go bid thy mistress when my drink is ready. She strike upon the bell. Get thee to bed. Is this a dagger which I see before me? The handle toward my hand. Come, let me clutch thee. I have thee not. And yet I see thee still. Art thou not, fatal vision, sensible to feeling as to sight? Or art thou but a dagger of the mind, a false creation proceeding from the heat-oppressed brain? I see thee yet in form as palpable as this which I now draw. Thou marshalest me the way that I was going, and such an instrument I was to use. <laughs> Mine eyes are made the fools of the other senses, or else worth all the rest. I see thee still, and on my blade, and dudgeon gouts of blood, which was not so before. There's no such thing. It is the bloody business which informs thus to mine eyes. Now, o'er the one half world, nature seems dead, and wicked dreams abuse the curtained sleep. Witchcraft celebrates pale Hecate's offerings, and withered murder, alarmed by his sentinel, the wolf, whose howls his watch, thus with his stealthy pace, with Tarkin's ravishing sides towards his design, moves like a ghost. O thou sour and firm set earth, hear not my steps, which they, which they may walk for fear. Thy very stones prate of my whereabout, and take the present horror from the time which now suits with it, whiles I threat, he lives. Words to the heat of deeds, too cold breath gives. I go, and it is done, the bell invites me. Hear it not, Duncan, for it is a knell that summons thee to heaven or to hell. 
And that's the end of Act 2, Scene 1. So off we go. No, <laughs> just real quick, what he's talking about here. So he dismisses the servant and says that um, Lady Macbeth is supposed to ring a bell when she's ready for him right, with his drink. Me, me, me. So anyway, um, but then he, he sort of hallucinates a dagger in front of him and he spends a little bit of that speech trying to make sense out of is this an actual dagger that I'm seeing? Am I hallucinating this dagger? Is this my mind playing tricks on me? Is this something saying that I shouldn't do it? And then he imagines blood all over the dagger and it kind of freaks him out and he's like, no, this is, this is witchcraft in front of me. This is evil magic. This is all sorts of things. And he's like, I can't, I can't even really. And then he just, he, he's trying real hard to keep himself together, to keep himself calm, to keep himself quiet. He asks the stones beneath his feet to please be quiet so that his footsteps don't give away where he is and where he's going within the castle. And then the bell sounds. Lady Macbeth rings the bell for him. And he's like, oh dear God, please don't let Duncan have heard that bell. Because if he did, that might wake him up. Because remember, the plan is when Duncan is asleep, Lady Macbeth will get his like night watchman guards so drunk that they pass out so that she and Macbeth can go in and kill Duncan and then blame it on the guards. So if Duncan is awake for all of that, then that sort of screws their plans. So he hopes that Duncan doesn't hear the bell. So this is yet again, another moment of Macbeth kind of freaking out about this thing that he's about to do. Um, so we're starting to feel a little bit maybe more justified in in Lady Macbeth's saying, you know, unsex me and let me be strong enough for my husband because my husband doesn't have the strong male will about things, so I shouldn't have the, the weak female feelings about things. I, I need to be the tough one that encourages him to actually go do this. And this is another moment of him maybe not wanting to go do it, Maybe his, self his subconscious is making him hallucinate things that would encourage him to not do it. But he, he holds it together and he goes off to take care of what needs to be done. So tomorrow, Act 2, Scene 2, we'll start to see whether or not they actually do what they have set out to do. I will see you then for that. Mwah.